Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. It's the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, video games, sports, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Romoliotis. On Twitter, you know me as PD Beats. I'm really excited. To be joined by my guest um, this uh, morning, uh, he voices Arthur Morgan in one of the biggest video games of the year, Red Dead Redemption 2. We're with Roger Clark. Roger, welcome to Pop Alternative. Hey, how's it going? Thank you so much for having me. No problem. I mean, whether you're a voice actor, whether you're a writer, a musician, you're all storytellers. When did Roger Clark decide that he wanted to be a storyteller? Oh, man. Well, first of all, let me say, I mean, this is the industry is changing rapidly, as we all know, you know, but most of the work done on Red Dead wasn't actually voice acting. You know, performance capture is becoming a bigger and larger part of the way games are made now. And they, they're two very vital but completely different mediums. So I, it's not like I take any objection to being called a voice actor because I'm very proud to be one. It's mm -hmm. just most of the stuff on Red Dead was performance capture. And we're just trying really hard to, to to bring awareness to the fans so that they know the difference, you know. Uh, but to answer your question, I I started doing it when I was a kid. And when I it was time to go to college, I very foolishly thought that uh, I wanted to make you know a living instead of doing what I loved. So I went into computers and that didn't last very long. I eventually took the bull by the horns and, and did the brave thing and and tried to uh, to study acting, and I did it. And you know, and I the next year will be twenty years as a professional actor. I'm wow, very that is amazing. <laughs> and uh, we mentioned before we started. I mean, it's just taken off as well. You mentioned like the online Red Dead Redemption Two is just yeah. taken off day by day, and it's become like, one of the biggest video games of the year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there was so much competition in 2018. There was some really solid games. I personally, I loved God of War. I thought uh, Spider-Man was awesome too. Detroit Become Human, I haven't actually played, but what of what I've watched, it looked amazing too. And I've gotten to meet a lot of awesome other uh, colleagues and actors who worked on those games. And yeah, yeah, Red Dead 2 is very anticipated. A lot of people loved the, the original Red Dead Redemption from 2008, was it? Or 10? Is it Undead Nightmare was 10? I don't know. Rob Weedoff would know. But obviously, we had a lot to live up to, a lot of expectations for the fans, you know, and I knew I had big shoes to fill as well, because John Marston, let's face it, is a total legend, you know, and, and when people found out that you weren't going to be playing John Marston on this one, you know, a lot of people that legitimately were a little disappointed and they're like arthur oh oh man <laughs> yeah but arthur morgan how he held his own you know what i mean he's he, he's oh, got this thanks. swagger and you're the reason behind that swagger with that voice and i gotta yeah, mention man. it because you mentioned it in um uh it, I, th I think i saw another um uh an interview about this or so Arthur Morgan has a distinct voice and everything. And then when people meet you at the conventions, you don't sound like anything like Arthur Morgan. Does that like come up a lot? Like, is that, is that something that surprises a lot of people at conventions? Yeah. Well, I think, um, I think some people were a little bit surprised when I was, was lucky enough to get that award from the game awards. Uh, and when it was kind of like a Hugh Laurie house moment, when <laughs> I went up and accepted it and they went, hang on a minute. <laughs> but yeah, people want me to do the voice all the time. And they went to do do the Arthur, do the boy. Can you cough for me real fast? And I'm happy to do it. You know, whatever makes the fans happy. But yeah, yeah, I worked on the I knew that I knew that I had to do something with it. And when I went for the first audition, they told me they wanted a Midwestern accent. So at the time I was working with a fellow from Flagstaff, Arizona. So he helped me out a bit. But then for some way or shape or form, a bit of Southern slipped in there too. So I eventually came up with some sort of a hybrid accent. But, you know, consistency is more important than accuracy, I think. Oh, no, absolutely. And uh, we'll ask Roger Clark about this too. But I, I actually, I wanted to know, what does is, what is Arthur Morgan think about 
social media? Like, what would he say about social media if we if you showed him Twitter or Facebook and showed him all the interactions at the oh, fan man. conventions? Oh, he'd be totally perplexed. He wouldn't know what to think of it. First of all, he'd be you know eighteen ninety nine. He wouldn't know what to think of the phone. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, like most old-timers, I'm sure he would look down on it, you know, and he'd say it's just useless words, you know. Deeds mo- deeds are more important. Actions are more important than words. All you do is tap onto your phone and whatnot. You got to do a tweet like a little bird, all right? Yeah, man, I think it would blow their minds up. <laughs> I was hoping you were going to give us a sample. That's why I asked. <laughs> no, it's- yeah. Yeah, I got got set up my new TikTok account. I'm gonna try and get loads of subs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I <laughs> that clip right there. I can just post that on Reddit. Ar- oh, Arthur, yeah, Mor- Arthur Morgan going on TikTok. <laughs> it was probably gonna like explode. <laughs> no, but it but it's crazy how every year we talk about it. There's all these new apps and these new technologies, and you're seeing like conventions, the convention scene, I find really interesting because you're seeing a lot more things done at conventions and interacting with fans and the panels are also interactive. Like they have people like FaceTiming in and everything. And it's just incredible. What is, what has kind of fascinated you the most about the, in the last couple of years about technology, but also the convention scene as well, Roger? Well, as you know, I mean, I was pretty much a struggling actor before Red Dead came out. You know, I was doing the odd bit of theater and I did a lot of voiceover. But uh, as far as uh, my career was concerned, nobody really knew who I was on a major level until Red Dead came out. And then so at the time where I became a, a, a kind of a known actor was at the same time where the social media is just lifting up and it's changed the way that fans interact with some of the actors of their favorite projects i think you know whereas back in the day you'd read a, you'd get a magazine and you'd want to read an interview these days the fans have a much much easier access to the to the actor themselves you know they and i try to encourage that and i try to i, I try to respond to as many people as i can obviously i miss loads but uh it's been it's been so heartwarming to be able to chat with the fans and to see uh, directly what the effect your work has had on them. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I'd be playing video games all the time, and it, it, to be honest, it, my dad would be screaming at me, you know, get in, get down for dinner or whatnot, get off that damn thing. But now I get people coming up to me at the tables at these conventions, whole families where the father will start playing and then the wife can't help but start looking in and go, what's going on there? Oh, that's beautiful. Look at the way that horse moves. Kids will start playing it. And then their dad, who's like 70 odd years old, who's a big, huge fan of Westerns, he'll just start peeking around the corner too, saying, what's going on? It's bringing families together. That's something I never expected. Yeah, the social media thing is... In a, it's it's become a, a new way of advertising and a new way of just getting having direct access to your fans to letting them know what you're up to and whatnot and and it's amazing it's it's really you know it, it, people hire like people hire people just to hold just to manage their social media accounts which I think is insane you know and, and some people don't have the time but uh, that's something I don't think I would ever really want to do because. You know, it helps. It helps to know what what the fans respond to, what they enjoy, and uh, and you got to feed that. I think you know. Well, I find it interesting. Yeah, a lot of people, you know, hire uh, like social media managers and also yeah. like publicists too for. I think you can tell. I think you can tell too when it's not the person involved. You know, because they come up with very generic responses, something that's they make sure that they're not too offensive, which I do uh, always anyway. But you know, it's it's very safe. What blows my mind. At, at about also more of the PR stuff too, and I'm I think I'm allowed to say this now because I also have done pub like PR work and done publicist sure. work and got people on podcast. Um, is like yeah, I understand the um getting a publicist because you don't have the time to yeah. you know organize the the um interviews yourself, but. Sometimes, you know what I mean, like the idea of being told what podcasts to do or what shows to do without kind of knowing what is going on, I think that can kind of be an issue too. Like I'm sure a lot of people want to like look into and do research on the things they're getting themselves into as well. Yeah, that's why you got to tr- you got to really trust who you're hiring as a publicist. <laughs> you know, you got to know that they know what they're doing and you got to know that they understand what you want to get out of it. It's tricky. It is tricky. 
And then yeah. sometimes, and then sometimes it gets lost in translation. You message someone for a time, and then they're like, "Message my publicist," and you're going through that publicist. There's like a middleman in between, and maybe yeah. the, the 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 information doesn't get relayed properly. It's it's a tricky situation. Like I've I've, I've seen I've seen both sides of it. I've seen the positive aspects of publicists, and I've seen the sure. uh, not so. But like I feel like I you could say that about everything in the industry. Absolutely, and the publicist has to be seen to be to be earn, earning their wage. You know, so sometimes they'll be the bad guy even though they might not necessarily have to be yeah well, yeah it's, it, 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 it's it's also in sports like in like uh you know i'm an ottawa so big hockey fan and everything and the, the sports teams <laughs> you know what i mean like they're just kind of told from above what to do right who to accept yeah. who not and, and it, it is what it is you know what i mean but that's why i was really lucky because rockstar's pr and marketing department were awesome you know and uh Obviously, when the game came out, uh, it was this huge, huge hype, you know, and we uh, we were obligated by our NDAs not to be saying anything before the game came out because you don't want to spoil it for the fans, you know. But once that game came out, yeah, then, like we were saying earlier, the social media just blew up. And uh, I was a little overwhelmed, I won't lie. I was, I was a little like, what am I going to say here? I'm worried that I'll say the wrong thing and whatnot. But uh, Rockstar were awesome in that, and they helped teach me a lot of useful, valuable lessons. Absolutely, yeah. we have to. I think we have to kind of spread the love a little bit and talk about the amazing cast in Red Dead Redemption Two, yeah. because yeah. it's unbelievable. And specifically, um, I I've interviewed. I have a few lined up, but I've interviewed some of the camp the the camp girls. I've interviewed oh, Mia, yeah. Mia Davis and Joe Armanox have been on the show. And they are awesome. But they were talking about the community aspect of the show. Like a lot of people like hit it off um, while they were working on this. Sure. And we worked together for so long too. I was five years on it. My first day on Red Dead Redemption 2. Five years? Yeah. Yeah. My first day was August of 2013. And I auditioned. My first audition was in like January of that year. And I didn't know what it was, although I was heavily suspicious. But uh, I didn't know for certain until my second or third day on the job, you know. Uh, but that's one of the reasons I think the camp comes across so well in the game is because we spent years working with each other that we eventually became a camp of our own, you know. And it wasn't that difficult to to, to bring across that camaraderie, you know. It just it was there anyway. So, uh, and I got to give a special shout out too to the original OGs, the people like Benjamin Byron Davis and uh, Stephen Palmer and Rob Weedoff who were in the first Red Dead Redemption and how when they welcomed me with open arms, because let's face it, I was the new guy and I was the playable character. And like they, I know a lot of people who may have been a little standoffish about that, but no, they were so welcoming and open and it really helped with, uh, with the work and just telling the story that we had to tell. No, absolutely. And, and, and it's pretty cool because... Um... The I'm a big fan of kind of ensemble cast, and you see it a lot in like TV shows now, right? Where it's kind of like sh- spreading the love, kind of giving us. There's a lot of shows like Orange is the New Black is a show that had like over like 40 characters yeah, on certain yeah. episodes. Seasons. Like, it was insane, you know what I mean? And yeah. pe- and that's like a lot of people that get to say that they've been part of one of the biggest shows on the planet. And then with you guys, you get to say that. Many of you get to say you've been part of the biggest video game on the planet, right? Yeah, it's been it's been successful. Twenty five million copies and counting, I think. And uh, like we were saying before, the, the the online aspects are just they keep adding more and more stuff. It's like GTA Five Online was, you know, and and that's still going strong after over five years now. It's been out. That game's been out. What is it? It's five years? Yeah, five years now. And the online aspect of that is still going strong. And I think Red Dead is is very unique and it offers something very different so that uh, people will be able to now do online for multiple Rockstar games. I haven't been on for a while, actually. I haven't been on since it was in, still in the beta. So I've, I've got some catching up to do. Are you gonna? I I find it funny if you ever go online and play it and if you talk to some people and, and have you ever thought about like doing the voice? <laughs> I thought about it, yeah. I remember talking to Ned Luke about it because he would go online in GTA. And he told me a funny story where someone's like, yo, dude, why are you trying to be Michael? You know you're not Michael, right? <laughs> what do you mean? I actually am. And they went, no, you're not. So then they started trolling him and killing him. <laughs> he couldn't even barely respawn before they, you know, he got all his 
crew with him, and they just started killing Ned Luke all the time. It got <laughs> so bad that Ned Luke finally tweeted his PS4 handle and said, hey, this guy won't let me play the game. And legions of players went and started killing this guy in return. So he finally believed in <laughs> Michael. So I, I actually haven't done that yet, to be honest, because I'm a little terrified. I remember when I first started going online, because I'm more of a single player kind of guy, but yeah, yeah. online stuff <laughs> getting more and more insane now but anyway once sometimes i would forget to turn off my microphone and then i'd go to the bathroom and pee or something and i'm just mortified that i would ever do that again oh <laughs> you you mentioned um earlier that you know before red dead there were times in your career as an actor that there were struggles sure um so my my question is in pop turative of all i always kind of like to kind of give back and g give some advice to our viewers what's some advice do you have for some people that want to kind of become an actor or you know a storyteller that kind of helped you in the process because it's it will be very difficult but there there does seem to be if you if you work hard you know light at the end of the tunnel as well right yeah absolutely i have been uh i'll be i'm in january i'll be 20 years as a professional actor and i struggled for probably 14 the first 14 of those years i was struggling i was bartending i was catering i was doing some donkey work let me tell you uh, i can't remember everything at once i used to work in a chicken factory now, that was disgusting but um but i think one of the things I, I tenacity and stubbornness really helps also making sure that you're going into acting and or storytelling for the right reasons too you know i don't think uh fame is a very viable reason to want to get into it because you're probably not going to get it um i also i also really believe in theater you know i think theater is where it's at theater is where you learn the basics and uh, not to say that there aren't any fine film actors that started and stayed on film there are but uh for me personally i really can i can really most of my professional ethic now and i i put towards my starting out in theater and uh so my advice would be Failure is a great teacher. Don't be afraid of failure. Uh, just don't give up. Be stubborn. Be tenacious. And uh, and uh, try to enjoy it as much as you can. And, and when you're in those low down moments, just remember that everything's temporary and tomorrow's another day. Absolutely. Well, we will wrap up. But Roger, thank you so much for coming on Pop Alternative. Thanks for having me, Peter. It's good to meet you. Thank you, everyone. No problem. Where can people follow you on social media to keep up uh, with everything? Sure. So my Instagram is at Rolling Raj, R O W -L, L I N G R O G, and my Twitter, R Clark98. And I'm also on YouTube. And that's where I do a lot of my announcements for the upcoming cons. I'm actually going to Alamo City Comic Con uh, the first weekend of November, 1st to the 3rd. Benjamin Byron Davis, who plays Dutch, and Rob Weedoff, who plays John Marston, will be there. I've got some audio books coming out, uh, some Western novels done in that voice that you guys love so much. Uh, so check out my social media, and there'll be announcements about that very shortly. Any closing remarks from Arthur Morgan? Yeah, well, I'll catch you later then. Have me some. I'll be happy to be on here again, Peter. Talking <laughs> to this newfangled microphone. <laughs> that is Just awesome. Click on it and give me a like and add a subscription or uh, whatever, whatever, what have you. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash pop turn for previous episodes if you want to just listen you can go on spotify or apple Podcasts. until next time this is roger clark and pd beats signing off thank you for tuning in to pop turnative make sure to check out our past episodes of pop turnative on youtube be sure to like pop turnative on facebook and follow us on twitter this has been an autograph communications production